about a week ago, I did some uh, repairs and updates on my original Dreamcast. I was quite satisfied with the result from that, but I mentioned there are a couple issues still lingering that I wanted to resolve. Um, one of them is, as we turn it on here, love that intro. It's going to ask me to set the time. It always thinks it's November 27th, 1998. The Dreamcast wasn't even out at that point because there's an internal CMOS battery that uh, saves the time, but it's dead after 20 some odd years, so uh, it needs replacing. Also, <clears throat> you might be able to hear A very loud fan in there, I mentioned before. It's small, it's dirty, uh, and it was always loud. So, in this box, hopefully there are some solutions to those issues. So what's in the box? What's in the box? Let's see, because I genuinely haven't opened it yet either. But hopefully, it's what I ordered. Alright, so here's a much quieter fan in an insanely large box. God, I hope that's the right size. And this little thing that is a 3D printed uh, host fan kit, so it's a, as well as these little batteries. Now, these kind of look like your standard wafer cell batteries that. I tend to keep around in the millions, but the little, uh, these are CR2032, well, these are ML2032, these deep boys are rechargeable, and these are not. I'll have to put these in as a replacement, and it'd probably explode and leak battery acid everywhere. It's a very good reason to use these instead. Now, unfortunately, the new video cable I got, uh, Turned out to be a bit damaged. It's working, but I don't like that. I might end up getting another new one. Maybe they'll replace this one. Thankfully, even though the fan is very tiny, its box is very large because I guess they've just kind of gone out all in presentation here. But that little old tiny boy is what we want to put in right there. And this. Mm little kit should be full of some 3D printed parts that let that happen because while the new fan is still tiny, it's larger than the old one and it needs a little bit of help to fit in the same place. And there's some extra parts because apparently the space it uh, sits will kind of interfere with our standard latch mechanic there. And that boy has uh, a new latch system. Noctua is known as a brand that makes uh, really effective, high-quality fans that are also weirdly expensive and have a funny, ugly uh, color scheme that I think a lot of people have become endeared towards. Also worth noting, I think, that uh, this is the 5-volt fan. I believe Noctua makes similarly tiny fans that are 12-volt, uh, which is more in line with what you'd see in uh, the internals of a standard computer case. But uh, you wouldn't want to hook the 5-volt uh, <laughs> supply up to a 12-volt fan or vice versa for mm, obvious reasons. Honestly, though, what is this? a lot of pack. Before I can put anything in the Dreamcast, I have to get at the internals of the Dreamcast. I'll yeah, pop it open as before using this. It probably left over Ikea a bit. I have no idea why I'm not using a more appropriate screwdriver. I have dozens, but this was at hand. So, I got a power supply, 
plug right there. That lid that I think we're gonna have to replace these latch parts there, and who knows? We'll be careful. In the meantime, I lost those screws. Ah, there they are. And the final one. In our little kit, we have a plug to let it attach to here, a new shroud to replace this funky shroud, and uh, some of these new latch pieces, I believe, that allow it to open without interfering with all this. i got to reuse that spring, and I have to be super careful that when I remove it, it does not sling its way across the workshop. The replacement cell here for the CMOS battery goes on to the same board here as the controller bits. Now, that guy's kind of attached there. It's not just a matter of sliding that out. And in fact, I believe I might have some battery holders that I could replace instead that would just let me slide those things in and out at ease. Right here, I've got some wafer cell contacts that kind of go flat. I might be able to kind of uh, desolder the tabs on that and make them attach to this. Maybe a little bit of problem in that these are this for our part and that's right next to each other. I'll sort it. Controller board's got to be off before I can solder things to it. So. Pull ribbon cable out ever so gently. And now this tiny cord it should come right out. All right, to get at this now. My solution might be a little bit over engineered, but I'd like a way for the battery to be able to come in and out. So I want this battery holder that you can kind of pop in a battery and replace again in the future if needed. So this I'm going to have to connect to the pins on here. Uh, and I guess I'm going to use a little wire with a connect to uh, kind of be able to plug and unplug that and maybe mount this somewhere to the body of the case just outside. Seems to be a little bit of space here. Obviously, can insulate it against that metal backing plate there. But I think that'll work and shouldn't be too hard. Now, I am never one to turn down the opportunity to do a little bit of soldering. What we've got to focus on right now are that and these two points are connected to the same. So, I'm gonna run a wire to here, and one of the wires to here, to one of them tiny plugs. Am I uh, a skilled solderer? Heck no, but uh, I'm able to. And unusually, one of the first things you've got to do when adding, or when taking away solder, is to add some first, because heck, this solder is old enough to rent a car, so it wouldn't hurt but get a bit of new stuff to mingle with it. New stuff makes the old stuff easier to work with. We use a solder wick to soak up both the solder we've just added, as well as the original solder. Anytime someone puts a video of soldering out in the public eye, they open themselves to allegations that they are doing it wrong. And I'm definitely guilty of that right now. But if the result is right, was the process wrong? 
Mm. Now that copper wire is getting very hot because the heat is kind of transferring up through it. I'm going to do some more of this off camera because it might get messy. Another way to remove solder, of course, is a solder sucker. Now I have just the cheapest little version of this, but it kind of forms a vacuum. Get the solder hot enough to be wet. Put this here and pull. Kind of works like a reverse syringe to suck up the wet solder. There are fancier electric solder suckers that work kind of like a vacuum. I'd love to have one of those, but I do not. Part of removing something that has legs soldered into it is actually, oop, there we go, pulling on it when the solder is wet. That helps pull out the leg right there. So that's one done. And this one, hopefully. Well, it's kind of like wiggling out a loose tooth in a weird way. Of course, when we're removing something with legs that we don't necessarily care to replace, there's another option, which is to uh, just take those legs and carefully snip. There's one, and snip. There's the other. The old battery's gone. Clean up these solder holes so the new leads can go through them nicely. This little roach clip magnifier device has the name uh, Third Hand, which is self-explanatory, and I kind of love it. Set the legs in the way now. It can be easier to suck some of the solder out of those holes, or suck the remainder of the legs out. The main point is that I want a through hole so any wire can get through. Duh. And uh, I guess technically I only need one of these to be opened up. It's fine if the other one stays closed because they're both connected to the same line. I don't need these wires to be this long, especially when they'll be connecting to another part that's just as long. So I'm going to clip these short and then strip the ends a bit. have a handy but not very effective little quick stripper here which kind of takes a bite pulls back the rubber wire gives us some exposed edges there if there's one thing that solder loves more than solder it's more solder they tend to stick together so I like to tin everything, I give it a little primer coat of solder, tin the tip of the iron, and tin these bare wires. I've got to make sure that I get the positive and negative parts of all this straight. So on our original one here, we had uh, the one skinny leg that goes on back there, it's on the bottom, that's the negative. Up on top is the positive. So for my holder here, I've got positive on top. So that's going to be positive, negative on bottom to that. So for my wires, I got to make sure we keep that straight. Uh, let's call red positive hot and black negative. Take the battery out of the battery holder for reasons. You don't want that heat going into an active cell. Now, soldering positive to positive. I had quite a bit of fiddling and solder removal to ensure that these wires that are going to through hole contacts really went through the holes. So I cleaned up and actually made the holes open so we're not just Barely making contact. We should be making proper contact. I'm going to turn the iron off because I think 
might finally be done with the soldering because now this can plug in to that and the battery can easily be replaced off board to make sure that some of these don't make contact uh, when we don't want them to. I've got a little bit of Captain Tape. Captain Tape? No, Captain Tape, which often used for some heat shielding and um, insulation reasons like this. Electrical insulation, not heat. Well, I guess both. See, this way I'm ensuring that these kind of uh, exposed bits, ugly solder joints, aren't going to hit a conductive part of that and kind of short out. I'm also going to put a little adhesive sticky pad here so it can kind of mount to there. But I'm going to move on to the other modifications first. Back now to the device and this wee fan replacement. I need to get the whole cowl off. Nothing to unplug because it was plugged into the board, which is already off. So this has had a rough time and it is a humorously small fan. The one that replaces it. Still comically small, but Certainly a fair bit better. Bigger. More airflow. Now, for this new fan, its little 3D printed shroud attaches to the same place that the other fan did, but uh, the fan itself, you kind of hook in here, and you're just kind of using one of the actual fan mounts, and in the end it ends up sitting at sort of a diagonal, like that which we'll see when you get it in, but first I want to get in the single fan that's actually going to attach it to the shroud. That big box with all those accessories, and the only thing we really needed was a single Phillips screw to sort of attach it that way. And direction of the fan is important. You kind of want your sticker pointing out. You notice this kind of says the direction of the airflow fan spins this way, pushes the air out. So we want what we want for an exhaust fan. So it's going to attach here. See now why you wouldn't put the fan in first because it blocks this screw hole. It's actually going down that way. I had it a bit upside down. Let's take this all apart, slap it back together again. So we'd like to get that new shroud mounted first before we actually put the fan in in it because that little screw was something we can't reach once the new fan is in there. And then our fan goes in here, really squeezed in, and then the single screw holding it in place is right here on the bottom is part of the 3D part, it's got kind of a hook to sort of keep it in spot. Tight, but not so tight I break it. Enough room for this cord, which will stick out of the way here for a moment, but important here is this converter. This is what lets the fan plug into the plug on this board. So what we're replacing here on the top is this white latch with this black one because it gives a little more room for this larger, taller fan which would otherwise interfere with this. Now, to be a little bit careful removing this spring because it could fly to outer space. Now, get oh so tiny tiny. It comes up to be replaced by this. Looking at the original latch part, it's got a hook in this. For our new kit, we don't have the hook. This hook is separate, but I believe it's sort of 
threads through that way. A little word of warning to anyone getting one of these kits. This one came with no guidance, and I believe there's some tolerance issues. I'm supposed to stick that through that, so one hook goes one way, one hook goes the other way. So in the end, it sort of looks like this. But, in the process of trying to squeeze it in, this failed, so... Hoping some crazy glue will resolve that. Really sort of disappointingly, the shaping of this did not allow it to go through that hole remotely properly. I had to take a Dremel tool to it and shave it down further with a little bit of uh, the X-Acto knife here. And in the end, I've got a lot of crazy glue, which I hate to use for this purpose. Try and reattach the part that cracked off from trying to make it fit. Now, it's quite disappointing that I had to do that, but hopefully what I've got together here is sturdy enough. Roughly resembles the other one with a bit more leeway given here. So, we go to install it. So, our new piece does slide back and forth as needed to hook and unhook our tiny spring. Alright, I've loosened things up a little bit more here now. And I seem to get an opening and shutting process. Of course, before everything can run again, I've got to put the controller board back in. Give everything something to plug into. Things to plug back in include this ribbon cable between the controller board and the main board sitting under all this. Now we can take a lot of this loose wire here for our fan and connect it to a stock fan opening, making sure all this extra wire doesn't clip into the fan itself. And then our custom battery holder can plug in there and get some uh, double stick foam to attach it to the board. Right here to just help it stay in place. Where we put it on the board here. And then make sure these guys connect together safely. And this is what will connect the battery to the board. Give us the option to change the battery without a soldering next time. There we go. Tight squeeze with those tiny bugs. Put this all back together. Encouragingly, without it screwed all together, our new button does open. It's definitely a less give to our opening button, but the latch works. That's the important thing. There is a cat trying to invade my space here. So hi, Marzi. Oh, hey, look at that. Stay off my bench, please. Now, with everything back in place, that functions reassuringly. And this we can add into our Parts that used to be part of the Dreamcast, but no longer will be. Let's turn this thing back on, see how that worked. So, to test properly, 
Holy cow. I can't even hear the thing. I didn't think it was on. Still gonna ask me to put in the date. The question is, will it remember the date the next time we turn it on? GDMU thing still works. That's excellent too. But I power this off. Maybe even pull out the SD card. It has a date. It knows what date it is. Let's hope it stays that way. I'm gonna call this another rousing success. And. That is quite a quiet fan. I'm pleased with that. All right.